Welcome to Crimson Guitars, and this is the second video in our Sharpening Masterclass series. Now, I am going to be going through as many different methods of sharpening as I can, using as many different methods. <laughs> okay, different stones, different machines, and different techniques with those stones and machines. So this is going to be as, about as in-depth of a series as is possible, um, without spending thousands and thousands of pounds on every single product out there, of course, because while that would be incredibly fun, uh, I suspect my wife would slaughter me. Uh, and she watches the videos, so yes, I have to be careful there. Hello, darling. Now. I am going to walk you through the various types of stone that we generally could expect to see in a woodworker's arsenal um, when thinking about sharpening their tools. And the first one that comes to mind is the most recently developed, and that is the diamond stone. Now, essentially, they are wonderful to use. They stay perfectly flat. What it is is a matrix of industrial diamonds of a set grit-ish, uh, basically glued down to a perfectly flat metal plate. And uh, yeah, the, the, the plates are surface ground, so they're absolutely perfectly flat. And then through what I can only assume is black magic, uh, the diamond is attached and we end up with, in this case, this is a trend double-sided diamond stone, 300 on one side, 1,000 on the other. And uh, they're absolutely amazing. I got this one at um, Yandel's, my local... Uh, purveyor of tools and timber, <laughs> with whom I spent way too much money yesterday. But uh, yeah, I picked this up there, yandles.co.uk, if you want to shout out to my favorite shop. Um, and these are very, very good, predominantly because they stay flat. Now, when you buy a diamond stone, for example, the 300 grit, you get your chisel out, attack it for the first time, and if you slip, you will take rather a large amount of skin off your fingers. Uh, but after you've used it for two or three times, uh, the larger bits of grit that are left during the manufacturing process will knock off and you end up with what you will then have for quite some time. Uh, so they do start out coarser than you expect. Uh, or or maybe as coarse as you expect, and then go finer, which is the depressing thing about them. But uh, if you've got a good one at least, and there really are poor diamond stones, um, I'm not going to name any names, but if you buy, if it's cheap, it's probably not going to last you very long, basically. I mean, this is a rule that, that applies um, pretty much across the board, sadly. Now, this trend double-sided one is about, I think, 80 pounds, and, uh, and also comes with this incredibly useful uh, stone holder. And uh, if I just get that in there, basically, clamps away, and you've got support. You've got support for your stone, which is um, useful. These are also sold as water stone holders, um, check out Classic Hand Tools. I've just seen some on their website, uh, which I've considered. Anyhow, I have now digressed, which <laughs> you will know I do a lot. So the diamond stones are very, very good. They, they will stay flat, and that cannot be said for most other stones that you will see, uh, or that we're going to talk about today. Um, the grit changes a little bit, but, you know, that's okay. Where they are very, very, very useful um, is when you've got... Uh, an old chisel, you've bought it from a car boot sale, it's covered in rust and somebody has been using it to open paint cans or to throw at a brick wall just for fun to see if it'll stick in. Um, I've seen that done and 
is, is it wrong to feel sorry for a chisel? Um, anyhow, the 300 grit side will make fairly short work of flattening your sides and trying to get the chisel back to life. Now, you do need some sort of a, a lubricant. Uh, Trend will sell you this blue liquid. Uh, it's fairly expensive, actually, five or six pounds for a, for a hundred mil or something. And uh, they say this is essential. It keeps the stone or the, the diamond stone working perfectly fine. Uh, what they don't tell you is that uh, window cleaning fluid, Windex or... Um, window lean. I'm going to stop. I'm going to become the BBC. I'm going to stop throwing out brand names. Um, works just as well and keeps the, the stone very clean. Now, personally, um, or it keeps it lubricated. Personally, I have an issue with it because I feel the need to wear gloves when I've got my hand in that fluid for such a long period of time. If I'm sharpening one plane, I might as well sharpen four or five. I've got uh, four luthiers and three or four apprentices who will sometimes, because I have more planes than anybody else in existence, will borrow the odd plane or chisel and uh, I therefore have more sharpening to do but can't trust anybody else to do it uh, because sharpening is a personal thing. So if I'm working for a long time I actually want to have gloves on and that kind of gets in my way really. Um, WD-40, Water Displacement Formula number 40. Uh, WD-40 is also very, very good. But again, it is predominantly diesel, I think. And therefore, not very good for those fingers. Um, another use for a diamond stone is as a stone with which to flatten your water stones. And uh, in that case, you have to make absolutely certain to wipe the water off your diamond stone. Uh, or diamond plate. There are surfacing plates with diamond on them sold specifically for this purpose. And those, uh, yeah, if you leave it damp, you will only do it once because it will rust. And, uh, you know, in my case, this poor stone was borrowed by an apprentice the other day um, and became rusty somehow. And uh, I became rather rusty myself. Anyhow, so that's diamond stones, they are very, very good. You also obviously find those little small diamond plates. They're not as flat, they're not as good, but they are perfect for sharpening things like drill bits and the odd bit. Um, I have a set in a drawer somewhere and I don't know quite where they are at this juncture. Okay, now diamond stones, well and cool, awesome. We'll get to water stones at the end. You also have oil stones. An oil stone is a naturally occurring stone. Our Kansas stone, for example, is this um, much vaunted um, natural stone. I think it's 500 to 750 feet below the earth in Arkansas and has a fine micro crystalline structure that uh, with a little bit of honing oil and uh, effort will sharpen your tools to perfection. And uh, like diamond stones and water stones and all of these um, wonderful tools, they come in various different grades or grits. It's a natural, naturally occurring, um, I want to say product, but how can something natural be a product? I digress again. Okay, it's, it's naturally occurring and therefore there are variations and you can get poor quality, you can get fakes, but, you know, they work very well. The issue I have is, uh, well, it must be said I have not gone out and bought myself a set of Arkansas stones. Uh, maybe if somebody wants to send me some to try out, um, hey, I'll mention your website and uh, give it a go. But um, the oil stones I do have, this one is a very, very nice one. And uh, this much coarser oil stone, this is a natural stone. This is a man-made product, I suspect. This is from my daddy. One of the first tools I ever had. Um, hmm. Anyhow, I digress. Again, 
there's a drinking game going on. Every single time I say digress, you have to drink. And that's three or four or five or six so far just in this video. Woohoo. Um, wouldn't that be fun if I did the same and uh, then tried to sharpen something? I don't like oil stones as much. They stay flatter for longer because they tend to be much, much harder. And this means that they don't also tend to cut quite so fast or quite so well, in my opinion. Um, I haven't used the modern ones. I've only used the ones that I've got. And uh, what I do use them for is small touch-ups on carving tools because, because they're harder. If you're playing with a V-carve uh, tool or something that you really are probably just going to gouge into your stone with, it's safer to use that um, because it's a harder stone. Whereas with a Norton, in particular, the Norton water stones, they're soft as hell. And uh, if you gouge into that, you're going to gouge into it and, and be really, really annoyed. Um, so they stay for flatter longer. They are harder, therefore take longer to, to sharpen with. Um, they don't abrade quite so well, in my opinion, as water stones do. However, they do have their place. In particular, actually, scrapers. Um, I often use my water stones... In fact, I was taught by my old venerable master. Um, I was taught to use a water stone specifically for scrapers. And, uh, and that's why I have this water stone, actually. Uh, sorry, oil stone, crikey. I was really on to the next topic. The next topic is water stones. They come in various different guises. Uh, for example, uh, this is a Norton Waterstone, and, uh, and my fingers are all mushy now. Uh, made in Mexico, and they are made. They are man-made, and I'm not sure if you can see just how <laughs> slushy I am. Let's find some paper. Okay. As such, they are very, very homogenous that's the word I'm going to use and uh, if it says 4,000 grit on it it is 4,000 grit if it says 1,200 grit it is 1,200 grit uh, now I find these Norton ones in particular uh, softer than the average water stone which means that they're very very soft you will have to flatten these stones every single time you use them and the same goes for other water stones, because unlike everything we've been talking about so far, water stones will, will become not flat. For example, I'm sure I found one. Here it is. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I can't find an actual straight edge there on the other bench. There's about a, a millimeter gap in the middle of that. And that rocks in that way. There, I'm sure you can see that. The, this particular stone was actually used to level frets. And within seconds, uh, it had a 12-inch radius on it. And uh, I now need to flatten that. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that upstairs and we've got a big surfacing uh, granite reference block with sandpaper on it, and I'm going to flatten it on there, and then take it up through an 800, and then a, another 12, because that's 1200. I'm going to get another 1200 that I know to be flat, and rub them together, and resurface that. Um, Luthier Tom, who is a, a sharpening expert uh, who works here, he always buys two of each stone. He has two 1200 grit stones, two 800 grit stones, and two 6000 grit king stones. And uh, every single time he uses a stone, he puts the two 1200 grit stones together and he rubs them together to make sure that they're flat. And that is the smart way to do it. I tend to prefer, or at least I use, the king stones. Um, this is what I was taught to buy many years ago, and it's what I feel comfortable with. They are harder than the Norton stones, for sure, 
but still do need flattening every time. But if you do it every time, it's just a case of a quick rub, 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 and you're done. Uh, now, as to grits that I recommend, 800, 1200, and then a 6,000 is, is what I personally prefer. I've seen people go 1,000 and then 4,000. Uh, I have seen crazy, crazy people who decided to buy every single stone possible and go from 300 to 800 to 1200 to 2000 ish, 4000, 6000, 12000. And, uh, and we're going to have to talk about ceramic stones for that. Um, but while I am on the water stones, I am going to talk about this. This is sold by anybody who sells the king stones. Um, will, at least in the UK, probably sell this. This is a ceramic stone. This is a ceramic flattening stone, which stays perfectly flat, but has a coarse enough grit to flatten all other stones that you have. And, you know, with my 800 grit stone, I go like so for a couple of passes every single time I use my, my stones. And, uh, this is a little bit coarser, so it does make my 800 maybe 700 or 750 grit, technically, for a little while. But it keeps them perfectly flat. And if you do not have a flat stone, you will not get a properly sharp chisel or gouge, period. It might feel sharp, but it's not going to be straight. It's not going to be flat. And we rely on our tools to be straight and flattened, or at least curved where we want them to be. Um, not this random S-bend rubbish that you get when you try to carve to, to sharpen with a bent stone. Now, can you hear I'm getting worked up about this? For years, I didn't flatten my stones enough. And I was so frustrated with how I was sharpening. It just wasn't going properly. I, I said, I know how to sharpen. I spent six months at college, the first six months of my life, I seemed to stand at that damned sink sharpening knives. And sharpening knives is rather difficult, uh, at least when you start with no experience. And I know this, I know the theory, I've read the books. What is wrong with me? And what was wrong with me was I was, I was flattening my stones once a month, if that. And if you get out of the habit, you sort of half forget, and oh, it's flat enough, I'll just work away on this corner. Don't do it. If you flatten it every single time you use it, it just takes 20 seconds, tops, and you, you will have the correct reference surface to work from. All right, um, before we go into ceramic stones, um, in water stones and ceramic stones and Shapton stones, which are, I think Shapton sell the Arkansas ones, uh, they will sell something called a slipstone. And this is a, a wonderful, shaped stone with the two round edges and these are for fine detailed work inside of gouges or you can actually change the shape by grinding it possibly with uh, with that um, to go inside of v gouges for example and these are incredibly useful and uh, it's it's one of those things i've just got stone on my face <laughs> uh, it's called a slip stone and if you have carving gouges or anything like that, you will need a set of these. And there are various others. Uh, I keep my water stones immersed in water all the time. Okay, this is another tool. It's uh, got various radius curves in it. It's a water stone. I think it's about 800 grit, uh, maybe 1200. And uh, these will are perfect for you know keeping your gouges shape. So uh, check check out check these out as well. Again, I think these are sold by the same guys that uh, sell um, kingstones, uh, or at least it would not surprise me. Now there are various different brands. I've mentioned Norton. I've mentioned King. King are a you know I think they're natural stones. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, they're 4,000 and 6,000 grits definitely look natural to me. The 800 and 1,200, I'm not too sure, but, you know, it's stone. What, what can you do? Uh, I should have researched that before this video. Now, ceramic stones. 
I forget the brand name and it doesn't matter. Just Google ceramic stones. These are similar to diamond stones. They stay flat. They stay flat. Um, and the brand I'm thinking of in particular, I would really, really like a set. Um, I would really, really get into trouble if I bought a set. And uh, like diamond stones, they say, stay very flat, but it's a ceramic, so instead of diamonds just being on the top, I suppose the grit goes all the way through. If you do wear it down, it will still have the abrasive inside it. Another microcrystalline structure. And uh, they, go, they go crazy from very, very coarse to so fine you really don't need to even think about it. 12,000 grit or finer. There is no point, in my opinion, to go that fine with a stone. Uh, with your strop, it's a different matter. But, you know, go kill yourself a cow and use its skin to make a strop or, or just buy some leather somewhere. Um, so, ceramic stones, I don't really have experience of them, but I have heard tell that they are absolutely amazing. The people I have spoken to who have them, love them. They're expensive, they're manufactured, but they are high quality and will last you forever. And most importantly, do not need to be flattened because they stay perfectly flat. Uh, the ones I'm thinking about actually have uh, a tempered glass bottom. So you can turn it over and see on the inside what the uh, grit is, which is actually something that I struggle with with these. I've had to engrave 800 on the side of this one. Uh, anyhow, so there is, well, that is the broad offering of sharpening stones uh, in this day and age. And uh, they work slightly differently. A water stone um, by Norton cuts faster, but abrades faster. The king stones uh, cut fairly well, but they also um, last a little bit longer because they're harder. They don't seem to cut quite so fast. Um, an oil stone doesn't seem to cut very fast at all, but the one I've got, the ones I've got, at least are slightly finer and they're harder. They stay flatter for longer. Um, diamond stones stay flat forever, but you got you're dipping your fingers in chemicals and nastiness, and you know I don't have a problem dipping 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 my hand uh, in a slurry of stone and water. And that that feels natural and, and good um, and dry and therapy. If your wife can go to a, a spa and have clay put on her face, we can spend hours and hours and hours standing at the sink with our hands in a slurry of of uh, water, stone, clay. So uh, anyhow, I am now digressing again. In the next video, I am going to go through the various methods that I have found to sharpen chisels using, I'm gonna try and use every single one of these types of stone just to give you a, an overview of what they all do. And uh, that is gonna be video three of the Sharpening Masterclass by Crimson Guitars. Um, Sounds so pretentious, but anyhow. All right, thank you very much for watching. If this has been helpful in the slightest, please click that like button. It actually really helps. Click subscribe and, and subscribe to the playlist because these videos will keep on coming. And uh, well, quite frankly, I appreciate your support. If you have a type of stone that I have not mentioned or have not even heard of yet, if you've got a different sharpening method that you think I might not know about, that is your favorite sharpening method in the world, a secret stropping compound, or, uh, well, I don't know what to say because I don't know yet. You tell me, please. I learn as much from the comments underneath these videos and from the links to other videos that you guys provide as you are learning from me, and I love it. Please, bring it on. Uh, have an absolutely awesome day, evening, week, solar year. I don't know. Just have fun. Go and sharpen some things. Uh, or go and buy some sharpening stones from yandles.co.uk or Classic Hand Tools or... Um, yeah. 
stick with Yandels. They're, they're my, my favourite shop in the world at the moment. Um, anyhow, goodbye. <laughs>